Well, thankfully, we have a, a time limit on this because uh, I'm normally a very long-winded speaker or talker or whatever, and, and uh, so you don't have to suffer through a lot. But one time I was in the midst of one of my long talkings, uh, a man walked out of the church in, in kind of the middle of it, and, and I thought that was a little odd, but then by about the time it was over, he came back in. I thought that was kind of strange as well. And so uh, when I got up to him, I asked him, I said, uh, why did you leave? And he said, I went to get a haircut. <laughs> I said, why didn't you get the haircut before church? And he said, I didn't need it then. <laughs> <coughs> so uh, I'm, I'm under time restraint, so I won't have to worry about that. But uh, Then another morning I was <coughs> spoke in a church and, and uh, that evening I came back for the evening service to speak again and a little boy came up to me and had some coins in his hands and, and he gave them to me and I thought, well, that's, that's very nice, I, I said to him. I said, uh, uh, well, why did you do that? And he said, well, I thought you needed them. My, my father said, you're the poorest preacher he'd ever heard of. <laughs> so, I, I hope I, I don't go too bad today, but I really, <clears throat> I want to say this, though, uh, there ain't no grave that's going to hold this body. Amen. Amen. It's not because I can rise up, but the Lord Jesus Christ can raise me. Uh, so this is a day, and we should think of that often. Uh, ain't no grave going to hold this body down because God is faithful. And, uh, I may let people down, and I have, but he never does. And praise the Lord for that. Uh, we can rely on that and uh, yep. uh, take hope and, and have faith in that. Now, now the bad part, I kind of wish I hadn't uh, picked this topic out. I mean, the church looks so good and the sun's shining out there and everybody's smiling and happy and here I'm going to bring you all down, sad to say. And uh, Easter, by the way, <coughs> is mentioned just one time in the Bible, in Acts 12, 4. And when he had apprehended him, he put him in prison, and he delivered him to four quintarians of soldiers to keep him, intending after Easter to bring him uh, forth to the people. Now that's the only time Easter is mentioned in the Bible. <clears throat> and it's mentioned. <clears throat> Excuse me. And it's mentioned in a context of a King Herod and what's going on with him uh, in a in a kind of a pagan way. Um, this is where it's going to be difficult. Um, I wish I hadn't prepared the topic. I wish I had another topic to off the top of my head to go, but Easter <clears throat> is a, uh, comes from the word, uh, I hope I pronounce this somewhat, asteret, which in turn is one of the titles of Beltis, which is the queen of heaven. Now, that's a very, very, very negative thing. Um, this name of Queen of Heaven, Astra, which Easter comes from, uh, that name, 
came back, uh, came from uh, a number of generations before Christ. So it has a connotation, and it started in a connotation of a pagan uh, religion. So I know this is not going to be the, the most pleasant of, of things, but uh, uh, <clears throat> many of the early Christians, and not the apostles, but they kept the observance of the Jewish Passover. Mm -hmm commemorating the death of the Lord Jesus Christ as well as his resurrection. Now, uh, there is no place that in the Bible tells us to commemorate uh, Easter uh, and even the Jewish Passover when not uh, those things are, are gone. Now, preceding the Passover, preceding Easter, I should say, uh, is a time of Lent. Now, believe it or not, Lent is not found in the Bible. Uh, that's another thing that came directly uh, from a pagan uh, time. Uh, so, uh, Lent uh, was the 40 days of fast after 40 days of riotous living uh, and anything goes uh, for the pagan that, that divides this time and so uh, uh, you know I don't think we put any emphasis on Lent uh, here uh, and we shouldn't uh, because it's not a, uh, anything that the Bible would would commend us to do. Now, during this time, uh, there would be uh, bakery products made and uh, uh, made from flour and honey, but they were made for the offerings of the gods. If we were to look in Jeremiah, turn with me to Jeremiah, Jeremiah 7, and verse 18. And you can see where making uh, flour and honey and <coughs> And to the to the gods, chapter uh, seven, verse eighteen in Jeremiah, the children gathered wood, and the fathers kindled the fire, and the women needed their dough to make cakes, what, to the queen of heaven, and to pour out drink offerings unto other gods that they may provoke provoke me. To have the true anger. Uh, so, even though we put on our finest clothes and we uh, <coughs> uh, celebrate Easter, and we we got to be careful that we do not get wrapped up. And I believe this is one of the ways that that the devil uh, begins to mix. Uh, pagan things with with uh, things from his word, and uh, so we got to be very very careful on some of these things. Now, I'm going to mention something else. Uh, I saw coming to the church. Uh, they had a, at one church. They had. A, I guess an Easter egg drop. They dropped eggs out of a, I don't know whether it was a helicopter or a plane or something. These were plastic eggs and within them they had candy and maybe some coins or something. Uh, and this was a, a great day of fun, but we've got to be careful that we're not mixing uh, fun with, with uh, what Christ would have us to do. Uh, 
Eggs, by the way, uh, we always talk about, I don't know if you did, I did when I was a kid. Uh, we painted Easter eggs. Uh, and at times we'd have an Easter egg hunt. we put eggs out in the, my mom or somebody, I guess, uh, would put them around the house and we'd go all, the, the kids would all go out there and hunt for these Easter eggs. An Easter egg hunt. Uh, well, this is not, we can, we can take it as a secular thing, but sometimes we, uh, we mix it with uh, the Christian thing, and we've got to be very careful along that line. It, it's very easy for us to make, uh, associate some things with the Christian things that are, that are not, not the case. Uh, by the way, <clears throat> eggs in society over the years, hundreds or maybe thousands of years, uh, they were a, uh, listed as a sacred emblem of, of the, actually from the Druze, came from ancient Babylon, uh, and uh, <clears throat> the uh, mystics, legends, I uh, said that a big giant egg came from uh, the sky and fell in the Euphrates River, and out of it came Venus, which is another name for Asgard, which is another name of Egypt. Uh, the occult meaning of the mystic egg uh, was two things, <clears throat> and here we see them mixing it with something that's out of the Bible. The world was saved during the flood by a giant egg, by being in a giant egg. Well, we know it was Noah's Ark, uh, not an egg, but when we begin to mix some of these things, uh, <clears throat> another mixing that uh, they would use was the world was given knowledge and blessings uh, so that you could know Astra uh, and she ate uh, the bit forbidden fruit of the life. She ate the egg. So they mixed uh, eating the fruit uh, in the garden that God said not to so we see again that sometimes things get mixed up and all confused uh, by mixing some Bible with some legends or some, some of these other things. Another example, <clears throat> there's a lot of places that have sunrise services. Now, I've been to a few. If we look in Exodus, uh, e Ezekiel, I'm sorry, Ezekiel chapter 8. Ezekiel chapter, chapter 8. <clears throat> and we'll uh, start verse 13. He said also unto me, Turn thee yet again, and thou shalt see the greater abomination, abominations that they do. <clears throat> then he brought me to the door of the gate of the Lord's house, which was towards the north. And behold, there was the women weeping for a tasmon. Now that's another name, literally, for Ashtaroth which is also another name for Egypt. <clears throat> then said he unto me, Hast thou seen this, O son of man? Turn thee yet again, and thou shalt see greater abomination than these. And he brought me into the inner court of the Lord's house. Behold, at the door of the temple of the Lord, between the porch and the altar, were about five and twenty men, with their backs towards the temple, 
uh, of the Lord and their faces towards the east and they worship the sun towards the east. Then he said unto me, Has thou seen this, O son of man? Is it a light thing to the house of Judah that they commit the abominations which they commit here? For they have filled the land with violence and have returned to provoke me to anger and lo, they put the branch to their nose. Therefore, I also deal in fear in my eyes, <clears throat> shall not spare them, neither will I have pity, and though they cry in my ears with a loud voice, yet will I not hear them. Again, we see, got to be careful sunrise services that uh, we, uh, we don't put the sunrise service above of a Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. <clears throat> then, guess what? We have, we have uh, what? What little animal do we often associate with Easter time? Does anybody know? Yeah. Little bunny rabbit. Bunny rabbit is right. A little bunny rabbit. Uh, I know many years ago, one of the churches uh, gave little bunny rabbits out to the little kids, which was a way to destroy the bunny rabbit. <laughs> I won't do that today, Brother Frank. <laughs> really? We got to have the knowledge on how to keep them alive because I know I killed mine. <laughs> Not intentionally, but, but it died shortly after I got it home. Uh, I guess you're supposed to feed them on you. <laughs> I don't know what went wrong there. But, but uh, the rabbit is a uh, pagan uh, animal <coughs> uh, associated with fertility. Uh, and so, again, we get these things mixed up and and we combine them sometimes with, uh, you know, things from the Bible, and we get, uh, we, we, we're not to do that. We, we need to be very, very careful. What is the <clears throat> number one meat that is eaten at Easter time? What? what you Lamb. Lamb? Lamb. Ham. 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 Okay. Ham is correct. Uh, that is uh, oftentimes, in fact, I think we're going to have ham loaf today. <laughs> but uh, <clears throat> so, uh, ham. Now, you know, the pagans uh, used to eat ham in direct, uh, showing direct disgust for the Jewish people. Uh, the Jewish people do not eat ham or pork. And so the pagans would eat ham deliberately as a slight to the, uh, the uh, Jewish persons. So uh, that's kind of, a, kind of a, a, another item that we mix things kind of together that, and come out with something that's not good. Uh, uh, we we uh, make a point often to uh, talk about Good Friday. In fact, uh, they used to uh, have a Good Friday ecumenical uh, Good Friday service in Hillsboro. I don't know if they do anymore. I haven't heard of it, but but uh, where the churches would get together on Good Friday and have a service. Well, <clears throat> uh, what was that all about? Supposedly, uh, the Lord, according to them, would have been crucified on Good Friday. Well, if you do the uh, uh, investigation, that that wasn't the case. Amen. And so, again, we see uh, 
things that are mixed in with society, kind of mixing in and, and diluting the Word of God. Uh, we, uh, <clears throat> uh, during Holy Week, which is not uh, listed in, in the Bible in any way, uh, they had uh, the rites of burning candles and lamps at the tomb of the Babylonian god Moloch uh, and reinforcing uh, and this was reinforced and reinstated by uh, the Catholic Church. Uh, so uh, Holy Week is not mentioned in the Bible and yet sometimes uh, some of the groups do mention that. Now uh, we have Ash Wednesday which is 40 days before uh, uh, Easter and Ash Ashes were a sign of uh, humility, humbling yourself. Uh, but believe it or not, uh, we need to humble ourselves. Uh, humble yourself in the sight of the Lord, and He shall lift you up. Uh, but you know, being humble, you don't normally. <clears throat> if I come out and say, you know, in fact. I think I'm one of the humblest persons I know of. <laughs> uh, guess what? I'm not. Uh, uh, you don't make a show of humility. Uh, because if you do, guess what? You're not. So, uh, we've got to uh, uh, be careful of that. Uh, they used to, I don't know if they do anymore, put ashes on the forehead. Is, is that done anymore? Yeah, it's yes. still, oh, it's still done? Yeah. Do we have any? <laughs> we'll do it here a little bit. All right. So, we'll bow before you and you'll put the ashes Amen. on. Amen. Okay. So, uh, we don't want to lose out on that. There was a thing called Bondi Friday. Thursday, I'm sorry. Yeah. <laughs> sorry. Uh, and uh, at that time, uh, one of the things that they did to show humility was to uh, wash feet. Wash feet. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> we should wash our feet. If we eat them. <laughs> and I can't hardly see, so I. Uh, <clears throat> So we have these things that come in that we've got to be careful of because what we do, hey, today, Sunday, first of the week, we commemorate, and we should do that 52 times a year, yeah. year after year, right. of yeah. commemorating the death, the burial, and the resurrection of our Lord and Savior, what He did for us. What he did for me and what he did for each of you. Uh, and we should do that. And that's the part. But that's uh, when we mix all these other things up. We got we to gotta just be careful. Because uh, sometimes we dilute of what we should be doing. And believe it or not. He has been faithful and he did it for us. And we should always thank him and, and praise his name and share that testimony, what he's done for us, <clears throat> with others, that they may also know the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, the Bible says uh, and employs that any day other than the first day of the week should be on should not be honored or worshipped. The, and even the first day of the week should itself should not be honored, but we should honor the Savior. Mardi <clears throat> uh, Gras. Has anybody ever been to uh, New Orleans? 
Oh, one, two, okay. <laughs> At Mardi Gras season? No, no, no. <laughs> Why would you not want to go there? Too wicked. Pretty, pretty wild. I know my son and some of his friends went down many years ago. And, and uh, in fact, a woman, they were shooting guns up in the air. And you know, the strange part is when a bullet goes up, guess what? It has to come back down. And there was a, during this period of time, there was a woman killed by a shot, a bullet that came down and, and killed her. So, uh, you know, uh, Mardi Gras is a time of pretty much immorality and, and uh, uh, a time of uh, debauchery, uh, and yet it is associated with Easter. So we, again, <clears throat> We got to be careful on on these things and spatial time. No place in the Bible does God commemorate Easter in any fashion. Amen. And so, uh, if God doesn't put it into the Bible, let us not read something in that's not there. Amen. Right. <clears throat> uh, time. Uh, will prove itself out that we should not uh, pay any attention to that. Let's look, if you will, let's look at Romans chapter 14. Romans 14. And we'll look at a couple verses, 5 and 6. 14.5 One man esteemeth one day above another. Another esteemeth every day alike. Let every man be fully persuaded in his own mind. He that regardeth the day regardeth it unto the Lord. And he that regardeth not the day to the Lord, he does not regard it. He that eateth is to the Lord, for he giveth God thanks, and he is, he is not to the Lord, he is not and giveth God thanks. So we uh, need to realize that uh, uh, we have not to esteem sometimes days that, uh, and every day we should live for the Lord Jesus Christ. Yeah. Uh, uh, not just Parenthesis on Easter or 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 Christmas or some other day, uh, but every day and every Sunday should be dedicated to Him. Yeah. Uh, in Colossians, while we're in the New Testament, you can come right on in. Set then you don't have to stand there. I'm I'm just. Uh, not knowing what I'm doing myself, so. Uh, in Colossians chapter 2, and we'll look at 14 through 16. Colossians chapter 2, 14. Blotting out the handwriting of ordinances that was against us, which was contrary to us, and took it out of the way, nailing it to his cross. And having spoiled uh, principalities and powers, he made a show of them openly, triumphantly over them. Let no man therefore judge you in meat or in drink or in respect to a holiday or of the new moon or the Sabbath day. So, uh, we're not something spatial uh, during these days. Uh, and obviously we should not judge. Uh, we should look at our own selves and, and uh, that should be, we should judge ourselves, not others. So uh, uh, 
we may observe in uh, Galatians, and we'll turn back a couple of books, Ephesians, Galatians, and Galatians, turn, <coughs> chapter 4, and we'll start at verse 8. Howbeit then, when we, when ye knew not God, ye did service unto them which by nature are no God. But now, after that, ye have known God, or rather are known of God, how turn you again to the weak and beggarly elements, uh, whereupon ye desire again to be in bondage? Ye have observed days and months and times and years. I'm afraid of you, lest I have bestowed upon you labor in vain. So we're, we're being told that uh, we're, we're not to bestow uh, our affections on, on uh, certain days. Now, it's not bad to observe July 4th, for instance. That's not a religious day. That's a secular day, which is fine. Uh, Thanksgiving. Uh, that's a semi-religious day, but really it's a secular day as far as a uh, person. And it's okay. And those things are okay, but we've got to be careful that we don't start mixing them in with uh, God's time frame. Yeah. We need to observe what he wants us to do every day of the week. Uh, we do set aside Sunday to meet together in fellowship to encourage one another. So that we should do. So uh, praise the Lord for that. So uh, I think they rang the bell. 